You might know Jess Hanna from her wildly popular and hilarious Instagram account, Jess the Maker. Her funny and relatable mountain bike videos poke fun at herself and at mountain bike culture as a whole. In this podcast interview, I chat with Jess about how she got started making Instagram videos, what her creative process is like, and what her life is like in Bentonville, Arkansas. But my favorite takeaway from the interview is that Jess is living and making a living as her authentic self. The person you see in her videos is who she really is. A funny, slightly goofy gal who loves to mountain bike. We could all benefit from Jess's example to show up as our authentic selves and to lean into our unique talents. That's coming right up. Jess Hanna, thank you so much for coming on the podcast today. And I think probably a lot of the ladies listening already follow you on Instagram. It's Jess the Maker. You're super hilarious. Oh, thank you. Yeah, great to be here. Yes. (laughs) Uh, How did your Instagram get started? Yeah, this is, you know, it's interesting. I, Jess the Maker was actually my graphic design handle on Instagram. So before I made weird mountain bike videos, I, you know, went to school for graphic design. I worked in and out of tech for a while um doing like you know mostly web design or working for teams on marketing teams and such and just the maker was sort of my freelance side of my business and so I you know and and kind of my personal account to be honest so I would just post life stuff and you know I got a little burnt out you know post pan like kind of towards the end of the major part of the pandemic I was getting a little burnt out you know, staring at a computer all day and doing design work. And I was able to take some time away from, from doing that. And that's when actually we, we had just moved to Bentonville. Uh, and this was about two years ago, a little over two years ago, we moved here. And so I had some extra time to kind of do other things. And I, you know, I, we moved here for mountain biking. Um, and I had taken a little bit of a break from coaching, but I kind of saw that there was a need here for more mountain bike coaches. Um, cause there were a lot of folks that got into mountain biking through the pandemic because it was like mm-hmm. that people wanted to get outside and do stuff. So there were a, a lot of folks here that, that, um, wanted to get into mountain biking. I've gotten involved and I'm on the board for an organization here called the women of Oz. And so I, I've started coaching with them here locally And, you know, so I was mountain biking a a ton more than I had um, uh, in previous years. You know, I I definitely have mountain biked a lot over the years, but I kind of felt like I got away from the sport a little bit. Like I wasn't doing it as frequently. And so moving here, it was like this reinvigorated sense of, ah, yeah, mountain biking. I love it. It's fun. Meeting a bunch of friends through the sport. And so then that following year, so that would be 2020 one early 2021 uh I think hold on I have to think my all my dates are all like messed up no (laughs) early 2022 so this is just last year um early 2022 I I don't know I just started making funny videos because I thought they were funny I did not think it was going to turn into what it is now I did not think I was going to make a living off of it or Mm -hmm. let this be my career um but I think I was open to open to whatever would happen. You know, I was just open to the possibilities of what could yeah. happen. And so, and I was in a good space for, for doing that. I think it was all kind of the perfect storm of things that happened, right? Like moving here, getting reinvigorated in mountain biking, and also just like letting myself, you know, not be afraid to put myself out there in that way. Um, so yeah, that's how, that's how I got started. Did you have any video making experience before? Uh, I, I would say I did. Yeah, I just here and there, I think being in the creative realm, especially like design, you're kind of used to this like editing process of revising, editing your design. And with video editing, it's especially in the past, um, I used to work in an advertising agency right out of college and my boss was the main video editor so whenever we would do shoots for commercials and stuff like that um and these are just like local commercials by no means was I working on like Pepsi or (laughs) stuff like that this is like local hospital local law firm you know nothing super glorious but like 
it was just fun. I, I, we would sit and do group edits a lot of times and we would try to try to like, you know, sort of finesse. So I, I think watching him edit was super helpful. And then back in 2016, I, my, one of my dear friends and I entered a contest for Live Ladies All Ride. They were holding a contest to win a trip for you and your like best riding buddy to go out to Grand Targhee, Wyoming for like an all expenses paid trip and attendance to one of their clinics. And so the way you had to enter to win was creating a, a funny video, which is so, so yeah. <laughs> inter- interestingly, now I do that for a living, but at the time it was kind of just a fun little project. We just tried to do that to like enter to win. I remember we entered right at the last day because we, we didn't know about the contest till a few days before it was the, the end of the date that you could submit an entry. And so uh, it's kind of funny because it's sort of come full circle and that, that specific event and we won. So yeah, spoiler alert, we won and we went out for this awesome trip and it was my first time going and like meeting all these amazing women, both coaches, participants, um, and that's actually what inspired me to get into coaching at that time. So after that, I uh, went and got my level one through PMBIA, uh, which is one of the certificate mountain bike coaching certifications out yep. there. And then, yeah, so pretty, pretty funny how it all worked out. So it's, yeah, it's not my first, you know, there, not to say there wasn't a lot of self-teaching in terms of editing. And there are definitely programs that are easier than others. I use CapCut a lot on my phone. I try to make it as easy as possible. I'm also learning how to use DaVinci on my computer. So that's for like more longer form. I find that that's been my my two main apps for editing. Do you shoot your videos on your phone? A lot of them, yes. A lot of them, you know, the iPhones are great. They got, they got all the, <laughs> everything you need is just right here. And um, I'd say a major, the majority of my reels are, shot and edited all on my phone I do have another camera that I'll use for specific videos like if I'm doing work for a client and it's like a first of all if it's a larger scale project uh like I just did one with REI that I hired someone else to do okay. <laughs> because, because you know <laughs> there's only so much I could do and I, I you know but it's also really hard to film yourself Right. Yeah, so yeah. if, t- if Tony, my partner is, he works full time. So if he's busy, I have to use my tripod, which is fine, but sometimes you just need someone there to catch different right. angles. And and so I ha- I'm lucky in that I have a few friends here in Bentonville. My friend Hillary primarily is who helps me shoot some of my like client collabs that are a little more higher end looking, okay. I'd say. <laughs> um, and she's, she is a professional photographer and videographer. So yeah. What's your creative process look like? How does, like, are you going out and shooting a bunch of videos at the same time? How are you getting Uh, ideas for these videos? What does that look like? The the idea of batch creation is so amazing. (laughs) (laughs) Here's the thing. I I feel, and it's, it's, I have done it in the past, but there are so many days. That is something I know I need to get better at is just some good, solid, time management, project management, my process, I think I have a good process in terms of the creative process. But when it comes to start to finish, there are times where I do think I could be a bit more efficient with how I how I film things, try to get things all done in one day and then have a few days where it's just editing. But I have to say it's it's all over the place, to be honest. Like and, and sometimes that's because it's out of my control, right? The weather uh, might play a part in that, or having random meetings throughout the day, or you know, we have a puppy right now. Like there's just yeah. all those life things that happen. Yeah. So yeah, ideally in a perfect world, I would love to just have, you know, a maker Monday where I'm just filming and doing whatever and you know, and so I am trying to get a little bit more into some sort of routine with that stuff. But in terms of creative process, usually, and this is whether it's a reel for myself or a reel for a client, let's say, uh, I always start with a concept, you know, whatever that concept is. um, I have this entire Trello board. I don't know if you're familiar with Trello, Mm -hmm. um, but I put 
all of my ideas in there. So anytime I might be out on a ride or I might be out to dinner with some friends or sitting on the couch with Tony or whatever it is and an idea pops in my head, I put it right in the board. And so Mm -hmm. then I can prioritize, right? Because obviously I have things that I want to do for my personal, just things that I find fun that I want to do. And then there are things that projects, paid projects that I have to make sure I get done by a certain time. All of it starts with that concept. And what I like about Trello and the idea little snippet is I can go into each one and add to it as I need to. So if I hear a song and I'm like, oh, this would be great with this idea Mm -hmm. or this audio would really pair well with this idea, I will um, like kind of add links and things like that. So build on that idea. If it's a client project, I, I pitch the concept and usually it's like, okay, yeah, we like that concept. And then I'll actually script it out more often than not, because with a paid project, you obviously want to make sure that they're cool with everything you're mostly going to say, because Mm -hmm. if you go and film everything and then you show them the first cut and they're like, well, we didn't really like the way you phrase that, or we don't want to say that about our product or, you know, like it's, it just kind of depends, right? Like I always like to kind of get the general gist of what I'm going to say approved so that there's no surprises. And then it saves time in the end because you don't have to reshoot and everything so yeah so really it's the concept sometimes a script um then you know the, the filming then the editing post-production all that stuff and then yeah posting it and that whole like the engagement side of things too so it's like the whole process is pretty long you know and then continuing to engage with people as they like see the content and stuff yeah. so yeah I really like the idea of the Trello board because that's a lot better. Mm. Like I just put notes in my phone and then I have to go back and I'm like, where, where was that note? That's what I used to do actually. (laughs) Yeah. That was like before Trello, (laughs) I was just app putting stuff in, in a note, in the notes app. Uh Um, But in Trello, you can use on your phone too, which is really handy. So then I can, I can actually show you, I mean, you won't be able to see this in the podcast. Um, So those listening, you know, definitely go check out, you know, an app like Trello is super helpful because you could drag the little cards around. So you could prioritize, Mm. you can drag them into another column and say, okay, this is what I'm filming this week. So you could drag it over and then, oh, okay, I'm editing this this week. And then once it's done, it's kind of satisfying to like put it in the done column. So it's like a Kanban board essentially, but in an app form, and then you can rearrange and do all that stuff. So yeah. Very cool. Um, You're super funny. Are you, Thank you. Funny? Thank you. <laughs> are you funny in like regular life? Is this, have you always I, been a funny girl? I, 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 one of the best, some of the best compliments I should say, not just one compliment have been from my closest friends who literally are like, when I started posting videos, they were just kind of like, yeah, that's, that's how you are. Mm-hmm. And I think it's a, it's a huge compliment. It makes me really proud because I, yeah, what you see on the internet and the way that I act is essentially who I am in real life, which mm. makes it a lot easier because I'm not, there are times where I'll, you know, essentially I'm acting, but it's also, it is me at the core of, of who I am. And I, yeah, I always have been kind of tapping into my humor um, ever since I could remember really. And I think it came, it was sort of this mechanism I used as a kid to fit in a lot. I don't, you know, like mm-hmm. um growing up I grew up in Pennsylvania and you know I was in you know honors classes and also like there weren't a lot of you know Asian American kids in my school uh we had a a pretty diverse school in terms of like um you know just where we were located in Pennsylvania we had a lot of folks from you know from all different areas and of, of life and all different colors but I would just say like in terms of being an Asian American I uh there weren't that many Asian American kids. So growing up, I remember just feeling like, okay, if I'm going to make it, like, I'm just going to, like, I just felt like humor was my way to connect with people and for them to see me beyond being a person of color, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So, yes. um, yeah, so I tapped into humor quite a bit and I think I always try to use it as a way to diffuse like awkward situations yeah. and just all the things. But yeah, to answer your question, I, I, I guess I've always had a funny bone. So, yeah. I love that you've been able to make this career out of being authentically yourself mm. and um, mm-hmm. using your like unique talents. That's pretty cool. Well, it's something you. that I think a lot of us aspire to be able to do with our lives. Yeah, I, yeah. it's it's a, it's been a journey and I I love that I could do that and be able to tap into uh to the humor 
part of my personality. And it's, you know, and obviously, right, like everything that the internet sees, my humorous side, it, it, it is one part of my personality, but there's also like other sides of my personality that I'm sure people don't get to see, like, you know, I, I joke all the time that I'm kind of the introverted extrovert. Like I do, I'm an extrovert. I'm pretty hardcore extrovert, but I also need a lot of time to recharge. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I can be alone for a while and be totally okay with it. And I find that that I need that time to kind of generate, regenerate and uh, especially to get in tune with like create my creativity and stuff like that. So, you know, I can be very introspective and, but yeah, funny. Um, But yeah, I don't know. I think it's been in terms of being able to make a career out of it. Yeah, never thought (laughs) that that would be a thing. And I feel really lucky that I get to do it. Not to say it's not still hard and have have its challenges. Mm -hmm. It definitely does. Especially when like you become the brand, you become Mm. like, do you know what I'm saying? Like it's it's, it's kind of, in some ways it's a double-edged sword. So yeah. You know, there's, there's definitely ups and downs. And especially if I'm feeling in a, you know, like if I'm feeling down one day and I like, that's another reason I think I mentioned earlier, like when I have to batch create or try to create as many mm-hmm. videos as possible. Well, if I'm just not feeling into it that day or, uh, you know, I'm feeling down or whatever. So that becomes a challenge. Cause for mm-hmm. me, like you said, like I try to show up as my authentic self. And if, in, if that day that I had planned to film mm-hmm. feeling kind of like, mopey yeah it's hard I can't really act yeah (laughs) you know it's hard for me to put on an act so usually I'll have to like wait or you know or give myself some time and space to kind of get into a better headspace so that I can show up in an authentic way so it's it's hard to put timelines on things like that and so especially creating videos where you're the brand and you're the personality behind it so yeah how do you sort of separate that like biking as your personal passion Mm. and biking Mm -hmm. as a job and does it ever kind of does it ever kind of ruin the passionate Mm. part of it for you these are great questions um I would say it could be either It, it depends on the day yeah but there are times where creating content could make the day better and we get a laugh out of it and it's really funny and on like sort of spur the moment there might be an idea that pops up and like oh I'll just get this done really quick and I'll film this and sometimes those are the best reels or because they just sort of happened organically um and then sometimes I think there are times where I'll be riding and you know, I think the to-do list that could come up for anybody, even just if you're not a content creator, right? Like this, the to-do list can sort of creep in as you're riding and you're like, no, no, I'm here to enjoy the ride. I'm here in the moment. And so it is, it's a constant reminder of like, no, today's just to enjoy. So I do make a point to make sure that when I am riding, especially if I'm out with friends, that's always helpful, right? If I'm riding with friends, riding with Tony, um, to make sure that like I'm there in that moment and that space and I'm not there to be creating content it's, it's a little easier with stories to be you know like oh I'm here on a group ride like I'll just yeah. take a few stories but if I'm I, I generally don't do that if I'm you know if for a reel for instance if it had to be a reel so it could be I guess either you know there are times where I think it could creep in and start to ruin the experience or the yeah. day or the moment of being in the ride but I think it's just that that awareness of okay why okay I don't want to feel like I need to be working per se right mm-hmm. So that I'm here to enjoy the ride. And so it's just a gentle reminder. What's your experience been like as a woman and a person Mm. of color working in this Mm -hmm. industry that is like very Mm. male and very white? Yeah, I, you know, I talked about this on the previous podcast too. And I would say, I think because I don't know, it's not mountain biking. Yes, predominantly, especially when I got into it. 12, 13 years ago, it was very predominantly mm-hmm. male and predominantly white. Um, but I would say that that that's not the first experience I've had, right? It's, it's not like I just came out of life and all of a sudden I'm mountain biking. I'm like, there are uh, a lot of white men here. <laughs> yeah. I think I, like that had always been the case in, in other aspects of my life. And mm-hmm. so, like I said, I think for me, I just wanted to keep showing up for me. And I think that was what was really beautiful about what what's cool about mountain biking is you can do it by yourself. You can do it in a group. 
uh, a small group, a large group, because um, it's really you're the one propelling yourself forward on the bike, right? And so, and I, I would say, like in the beginning, I yeah, I definitely rode with a lot of white dudes <laughs> for sure, and not to say you know I also rode with with women too, but. I would say that my experience, sure, there have been a few negative ones. You know, I don't want to discount that there have there have been negative ones, but for the majority, I did feel pretty welcome in the sport when I got here. You know, and I think that I, because I chose to surround my people, but like surround myself with people that were welcoming, and I knew I could feel comfortable with. So I think just at a human to human level, I mean, yeah, I'm not going to hang out with some, you know jerk or you know like someone who made me feel uncomfortable and I I think I was lucky to be welcomed in the way that I was and then also um I think also like that is such a good reminder for everyone out there of just like how you could really change someone's perspective by just simply being a welcoming friendly face Mm -hmm. at the trailhead lot wherever you know and just because that's that I was lucky to have that experience I don't there are many stories and experiences of, of people of color um, and women feeling intimidated. I definitely, not to get, don't get me wrong. I was definitely intimidated by mountain biking itself. Yeah. Uh, and then seeing, yeah, seeing all these dudes be able to like do all this stuff. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> falling <Yeah>. over, <laughs> you know, yeah. the, the kind of typical story of like it being really, really intimidating. So I think that even more so being able to, have a welcoming group or one person even just making the difference of saying like, you know, trying to help it feel less intimidating and, and more approachable as a sport. Are there any women that you've gotten to meet as a result of your, Oh, so yeah. Yeah. Like who, who are some of your shows in the bike world? One my, so one of my, one of my close friends is actually coming tomorrow. Her name's Amy and uh, she is like one of my first like female like I there was a a good group of women that in Ithaca New York where I lived um that I met that like were like kind of the first women that I rode with for the first like year almost two years of my riding I I don't think I really rode with many women I rode with my my partner at the time and really that was it so it was cool to meet other women that rode and Amy is one of my friends that uh, is coming to visit here in Bentonville. So I'm really, really excited to like show her Bentonville. Mm-hmm. And I mean, she, yeah, she's like one of my old, you know, ride buddies. And so it's cool to always get to connect with like someone you've, you've ridden with for many years. So yeah, she, I'd say like that whole group of women were certainly like heroes to me in the beginning times, because I always, especially, you know, on group rides where you don't know quite where you might fit in terms of level. Mm-hmm. you know there was always like the party pace ride and my the group that I always hung out with was like the party pace ride where you're just kind of hanging and then you're, it's more social you stop you talk you know that was always like something that was exciting to me was to be able to actually talk to people and like mm-hmm. have community because before that the, the partner that I mentioned before who got me into mountain biking you know I would barely see him on the trail I would be lagging behind by the time I would catch up, you know, he'd start going again. Right, right. <laughs> it, was just like, it was a very different experience. So, um, yeah, so I would say that group of women specifically was, was awesome to have. I mentioned ladies all ride. So mm-hmm. Lindsay Richter, um, and her business partner, Meredith, they're, they're super, uh, inspirational humans. Yeah. And I think, I mean, like I said, that was a pivotal moment for me to just see all these women, these badass women, like coaching, and um, I was learning so much that, that weekend. So, you know, shout out to them for sure. I'm trying to think other women, other women that I, you know, like there's definitely the women that I follow, also follow like on Instagram, like over the years, Katie Holden, um, who's such an inspiration as well. And just starting formation, which mm-hmm. is like, the, you know, Red Bull, you know, version of the Red Bull Rampage version for for women that actually what didn't happen this year, which is sad. Um so yeah, I could kill, I could go on and on, but those are, those are a few that, I, that come to mind for sure. Yeah. We had um, Lindsay on the podcast and that is the, the most downloaded episode ever, but mm, like several times over. I, love I am not surprised <laughs> by that because yeah. Lindsay is a phenomenal human and uh, got to see her at Rome Fest in Fruta, which was just always a good time. And yeah. Very cool. 
Yeah. Um, you mentioned Bentonville a couple times, obviously. Mm. Where did you come from? Where were you from? Oh, man, I'm from all over. It's so hard because I, I grew up in Pennsylvania in the Poconos. And then I lived in upstate, well, central New York. So Ithaca, which I mentioned before. And then uh, my ex and I lived on the road for two years. So we kind of yeah. traveled around in an RV, like all over the U.S. We did that too. Fun. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. We did it for two years. We we didn't stay together after the after that. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Uh, good times. Yeah. <laughs> good, good, good times. Uh, but no, I we are super, you know, amicable. And we actually uh, co-pup parent our dog, Cooper. And so, you know, we're, we're on good terms, but, um, so after the living in the RV, let me see, I'm trying to remember, we went all over, mostly the West, cause we were from the East coast. So we were like, let's journey around the West and see, it was kind of this trip to figure out where to land, you mm-hmm. know, check out all these mountain bike towns. Um, and that's actually when I came through Bentonville the, for the first time. And so I had, that might've been 2017 or 2018 and Fast forward, uh, I'm with Tony, my current partner, and he and I, um, we were living in Idaho at the time, just renting, and this is in the pandemic, so. Where in Idaho? We, oh, right outside of Boise in a oh, town called okay. Eagle. I'm in Boise. Are you there? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, no, that's where, that's where I was. And okay. it was, like, during the pandemic that we, like, moved there, so it was hard to meet people. Everyone was social distancing yeah. and rightfully, you know, and the, the vaccines weren't out and all that stuff. But um, we we were just renting and we had just a six month rental. And we we're like, well, okay, it's kind of expensive to, to live in Boise and we couldn't afford that. So we started to look around and then we saw, I had said to Tony, like, well, what do you think about Arkansas? And he's like, no, because he's originally from California. <laughs> So uh, he's like, no. And I was like, well, just hear me out. Hear me out. And I sent him all these articles. And I remember, you know, he kind of came around to the idea. And he's like, I don't know. That sounds pretty cool. Like, it's it's definitely a little bit more affordable than a lot of the other places we were looking at. Um, and so we bought a house online through a realtor. But she FaceTimed it to us. And we were like, that looks okay. And okay. we were definitely a fixer-upper. Uh, and yeah, we just bought it sight unseen, which I don't know that I recommend that, but, uh, we're still working on it, uh, two and a half years later, but yeah, we, we love it here. It's, it's great. The community's awesome. The riding's awesome. Um, summers aren't my favorite here. There's very hot, very sticky. The bugs are gigantic. So definitely if you're not a bug person, you probably don't want to move here, <laughs> but, but yeah, so that's how we ended up in Bentonville. What's your favorite ride in Bentonville? Oh, like tra- trail? Yeah, or just yeah. General ride? Oh, that's hard. You know, you can't go wrong with, I I think a go-to, because I really love jumping and like sort of free ride, you know, drops, jumps, mm-hmm. all that stuff. But I also really love technical riding and that's kind of where my background is. So you can't go wrong with either Slaughter Pen or Kohler, which is, the Kohler Mountain, it's called Kohler Mountain Bike Pre- Preserve. Have you been to Bentonville, by the way? I have, yeah. So when oh, we, okay. did our, so, yeah. we did our living on the road thing. We spent quite a yeah. bit of time there, but it's been several okay. years and I know a lot okay. more has been built even since I was oh, there. They, so. Yeah, I mean, it yeah. just, it never ends. There's just always something new to ride. And the, uh, the funny thing is about Bentonville and just Northwest Arkansas in general is that there are so many places to ride, even just 10, 15, 20 minute drive from here but I, I feel like we're very spoiled because we don't have to be yeah. this 10, 15 minute bubble because we could just ride to all these places. Yeah. And then, but there are like, there's Devil's Den. I haven't been there yet. I've heard it's really cool. Um, I still haven't ridden Passion Play, surprisingly. I've rid- ridden Leatherwood, which is about an hour away. Um, so yeah, there's all these places I still need to go and explore. So it's pretty cool that we have the, all this trail access. It's hard to say what my favorite is. I'll have to, one of my friends who just moved from here to Atlanta, she's also a fellow coach. Her name's Brittany Ducharme. And she has a really good saying of she, her favorite trail is the one she's on. And so ever since she said that once, I was like, that's a good answer. Yeah, I, I, like that. I can get behind that. But my favorite is the trail that I'm on. And, you know, I can find something fun to do, you know wherever wherever the trail leads you you know 
I don't love climbing. I will say that <laughs> it's not my favorite, but <laughs> it's a means to an, like a long grind, you know? Yeah. Which you can certainly get a lot. And you get of some funny content easy. out of it too. Oh yes. Oh yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> if somebody hasn't been to Vent- Bentonville and they'd like to go, um, mm-hmm. like what time of year should they go? And are there certain events that you would recommend coming for? Oh yeah. That's a good question. That's a good question too. Uh, I would say, well, you all know my feeling about the summertime. So <laughs> definitely maybe don't come here in the summer. And by summer, I mean like mid-June to mid-September can can be pretty hot. And we've had a pretty hot fall, to be honest. Even now, the last few days, it's going to start to cool down. Like the, it's supposed to rain the next few days. But the last few, you know, this last week, it was probably in the mid-70s, high 70s still. So um fall is obviously a really great time fall and spring uh which is kind of the shoulder season for a lot of places so it it is kind of a cool place to come in the shoulder seasons uh and then honestly I enjoy the winter here uh because you could still ride in the winter and it's not as busy as Mm -hmm. fall and spring but the winter all the bugs are gone (laughs) so and it doesn't it'll get cold but it and trust me, it can dip down, but never for that long. And so it's pretty mild in terms of winter and we'll get snow, but it never sticks around that long. So I'd say it's, you know, still a great time to come is, is the winter time. Why mountain biking? Do you do any other cycling disciplines? (laughs) I am, I am mediocre at a lot of other sports. I love mountain, I think because, but here's what I'll say, mountain biking is what I've poured my, the most time into. And so this is something I've actually thought about recently is getting into another sport. So if anyone has any ideas, um, we don't obviously here in Bentonville have a good ski hill. So, you know, I did grow up skiing, but it was like East coast skiing. So it's essentially skiing on a lot of ice and such. Um, (laughs) uh, And then let's see what else. I've never, I'm not super great at like hand eye coordination. So any ball sports, basketball, baseball, tennis, I've heard pickleball is really hot. Yeah. Yeah. I (laughs) I know that I will not be good at pickleball, Um, (laughs) but I I shouldn't say that. I I bet if I I tried and gave it some, some good practice, but I am kind of searching right now for like, what's that other sport? I love, I like, I do like kayaking and, and stuff. So perhaps kayaking or, um, you know, it's funny because um, back to the pickleball and the hand-eye coordination, I'm actually weirdly also good at foosball. Okay. But I think it's because one of the companies I used to work for, we had a foosball table and every break we would get, we would play. And Tony's really frustrated because his his parents have a foosball table. And any time we've gone, we always play. I'd say probably out of and I don't brag or I don't trash talk that much with <laughs> any other thing that I play. But if it's foosball, like I will, I will beat you. <laughs> and Tony gets really upset He's like, because he's only won one time out of maybe a hundred and hundred plus times. So he gets really frustrated because I beat him a lot of foosball. Yeah. You'll have to but see yeah. if there's a foosball league. I don't know if that's. The thing. I should, I should, <laughs> I should definitely look into that. Uh, yeah. So foosball, weirdly foosball, but yeah. How about you? What other stuff? I had biking. Yeah. So I like mountain mm-hmm. biking, but I also like road biking and okay. so gravel biking, wanna... bike packing, all the things uh, kind of like my thing. Yeah. And then winter, obviously it's not always bikeable. Yeah. So we ski too. And my yeah. son is really into ski team. So I spend oh, all our time nice. up at Bogus. Oh yeah, yep. Bogus is yep. it looked I mean super fun. Uh I am definitely gravel curious. There's yeah. a lot of gravel riding here too, and a lot of folks that mountain bike also gravel ride uh here in Bentonville. Um you had mentioned you mentioned events or asked about events here. Uh so there was just a big race, the big sugar, which is like a gravel race yeah. that just happened this last weekend. Um an outer bike happened this last weekend. Uh, but I'd say, I mean, I feel like spring and fall are jam packed with events. Uh, Women of Oz, if if you are someone who identifies as a woman and you want to come to 
a super fun event. It's essentially, it's hard to describe. We, it's called the Sun, the Women of Oz Sunset Summit, but it's a coaching event. So you, 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 you buy a ticket, but there's also kind of an expo. So it's kind of a cross between a small little festival, but also coaching clinic. And so this last year, so we had, or this last, I shouldn't say year. I mean, it was just in last month, Lindsay Richter, Joanna Yates, um, Angie Weston, like we're flying in some of the top coaches from the U S and Canada. Um, and so it's a really cool event that we just had. It was just our second year that we, we put this on. So um, we had over 300 uh, women come, that's which awesome. is super cool. Yeah. yeah. And um, so, yeah, that's, I, I would say, keep that on your radar for next fall for sure. Uh, I would also say in terms of other Bentonville events, the Bentonville Bike Fest, they did move the Bentonville Bike Fest this last year to May instead of June. So it was a lot less hot. It was still hot, but it wasn't as hot as June. Yeah. So I thought that was really great um, that they moved that. And so that's another super fun event. And if you like gravel racing, you should check out the rule of three. Have you ever heard rule of I three? I have heard of it. Yeah. Of mm -hmm. Okay. It's cool. For those of those of you who don't know what rule of three is, essentially it's a race. Uh, so it's, it's road, gravel, and mountain bike trail, but you get to only pick one bike to ride all of it. So most people ride gravel because it's the most versatile. Yeah. And then if you're on the road, you're not going to be kind of lagging. So a lot of people ride um, gravel bikes, but I've seen people ride, do it with mountain bikes. So it's pretty cool. Outside of Bentonville, are there other mm -hmm. events that you've been to that you really like? Oh, yeah. Oh, man. I love the Sedona Mountain Bike Fest. You know, it's definitely one of my favorite festivals to go to it's always really fun it's kind of like that be kicks off the mountain bike season you know and were you there this March. year like, when it got snowed out yes I was at Snowdona <laughs> it was pretty fascinating I I it was cool to see all the snow but I I definitely felt bad for all the the you know the bike brands that yeah. you know com the companies that were here trying to set up and they had to clear all the snow and instead of having three days, we had to kind of jam pack everything into two days. Um, but it was still a super fun time. And then Rome Fest. Yeah, I think I mentioned it earlier. Um, I've only been to two and I went to Sedona many years ago, and then just recently went to Fruta. And they're having their last Sedona event yeah. next weekend, which yeah. is or two weekends from now. So um, are you going to go to that? I'm not. I wish I was. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know. I wish I was too. I um, I have another friend, not the friend that's coming this week, but I have another friend coming into town visiting. So I, oh. I'm, I'm going to be staying here in Bentonville, but, uh, but yeah, it should be a good time. So I'm trying to think of many other events that happen. Um, when I first started mountain biking, I don't know if you're familiar with Dirt Rag. It used to be a magazine yeah, yep, yep. based out of uh, Pittsburgh, but they would put on a festival every year called Dirt Fest. And it yeah. was always just like, it was super grassroots and really fun. And just like a lot of, lot of, you know, just a lot of fun times, a lot of, you know, I don't know how, to, how else to say it, but it was just like a party in the woods, you know, yeah. it was just super fun. That was at Raystown Lake. Yeah. Oh, Raystown. You, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, have you been to a Dirt Fest? I've not been to a dirt fest, but I've been to Racetown. Oh, yep. Okay. Yeah. They used to hold it at Racetown. Um, so yeah, that, that, that was definitely a, an event I used to look forward to quite a bit. And then, yeah, I'm trying to think of anything else, but those are, those are what come to mind. Okay. I've got three final questions for you, but first, okay. where can people come connect with you and do you have oh. any sponsors yeah. or anybody else you'd like to give a shout out to? Yeah. So, uh, folks can connect with me on Instagram. That's mostly where I post everything. I'm just just the maker on Instagram, but also on TikTok. I had to like think about it, like on TikTok. And I'm on <laughs> threads now, which is you oh, know, yeah. the, the Twitter of Instagram. Um, and so also just just the maker. Um, I did launch a YouTube earlier this year called Dirt Scouts. Uh, and as to not confuse anybody, it's, it's, I think my handle is still just the maker on there. Okay. Um, but it's like my byline is like dirt scouts with just the maker. And the idea behind it is I wanted to create longer form content. That was more than just, you know, short, funny videos, kind of taking that and kind of making it into a longer format and sort of still, still keeping the fun, humorous aspect. Mm -hmm. But, um, 
get into greater depth with whether it's edutainment sort of mm -hmm. stuff or just funny kind of experience stuff, which is what we kind of encounter in mountain biking every day. Yeah. And so one of the series, uh, one of the videos that I'll be launching or publishing probably in the next week or two is called, it's a series called Get Over It, <laughs> which is uh, essentially about getting over mountain bike obstacles. Okay. So it's kind of this really funny um, play on like watching me kind of work through something and either I get over it or I don't. And so it's kind of a funny, just it's supposed to be funny, but also show you the process of like trying to work at a problem or trying to work at something, whether it's like a physical obstacle or like a mental hurdle mm -hmm. or something, you know? So yeah. Um, yeah, stay tuned for that. And then in terms of sponsors, definitely want to shout out. Um, so I don't know if anyone knows the company uh, Mirror, but they make, um, actually, I think they're partially based out of Boise or they yeah, have a Yeah, yeah, we know, well, I know a couple of people that work for them here. Oh, great. Yeah, they're they're one of my sponsors for this year and they're, they're super supportive and I love their products. They are a certified B Corp, so that matters to me as well. Um, and then Stands, No Tubes, also um, a sponsor and they're, they're, they're a great sealant, got me out of a lot of binds. They're actually out of Big Flats, New York, which is very funny when you think about it, because <laughs> I don't know why they haven't used that in their marketing. <laughs> but yeah, they um, should. <laughs> they really should. Have I'm you like, have you not pitched that as like an idea for it? <laughs> oh, I I have. Okay. It's, it's it's the wheels are the wheels are turning. Okay. Uh, literally. Um. So, yeah, and then. Uh, a few of my product sponsors, so High Above, Hip Packs, uh, Versus Tires, um, Hand Up Gloves. Uh, those are just a few of my product sponsors. And obviously, product is super helpful, too, when you're trying to trying to make things work. And so and those are products I've always used in the past, too. So uh, definitely support them. It helps support me as well. Um, and then what, there was another question you just asked, or was oh, that it? That Shout was it. Okay. You got, you okay, got okay. it. Okay. <laughs> oh, <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, final three questions. The first one is okay. what bike or bikes do you ride? Oh, yeah. That's a great question. I ride, uh, so I have a Rebel Rascal, which is a bike that I, that's five years old at this point. Um, I got this Rebel when they first launched at Sedona Mountain Bike Fest in like 2019 or 2018. I forget. Uh, but it was the 24th bike they ever made off the line, which is really cool. So they're, they're a small company out of Colorado. And so, um, but yeah, definitely a super fun bike. Um, then, and that bike's name is Randy. I name all my bikes. I don't I know love if you it. name yeah. bikes that. Yeah, yeah, okay. they're friends, right? All, I, they are, they're, they're yeah. part of the family. Um, so yeah, that's Randy. And then I also have a specialized dump jumper uh, Evo and it's a, uh, it's like a, it, it's a small, it's an S1. So they're, I don't know if you're familiar with specialized sizing, but what's nice is they make an S1 all the way up to an S7, I believe. So it's, I feel really good on, on this bike. It's my newest bike and the one I ride mostly right now. Um, and so that's really great. Cause I'm, I'm only, I'm five, three. And I feel like sometimes I'm in between an extra small and small on a lot of frames or for companies that actually make an extra small frame. Um, so I've been loving that. And then I did just get an e-bike. Ooh. Uh -huh. Yeah, I know it's a hot, hot topic, but, um, oh, I'm all for it. It, it is so fun. <laughs> like the amount of smiling that I do on the e-bike. And I think there's this like little mischievous part of me that's like, okay, Jess, but like, you still have to ride your acoustic bike too. <laughs> you know, like, don't forget, like, because I, I think there is something great about, you know, like I like the challenge. I like sweating. I like getting a really good workout. But then also you've been to Bentonville. Mm -hmm. Super fun to be able to get more miles in yeah. and do a bunch of laps yeah. on jumps and things like that um, and not getting too tired and still having, you know, the leg energy to push through a bunch of jumps and stuff. So I, I'm on the e-bike train. Yeah. Are, be are trails mostly allowed on the trails in Bentonville? e-bikes e-bikes yeah yeah mm -hmm. I I actually don't know that I've seen any signs that say no e-bikes allowed okay. to be honest yeah I and I, I you know don't don't quote me on that but I I haven't seen one so yeah second question for you is where is yeah. your favorite place you've ever ridden your bike oh that's hard um but you know I I would say 
the Southwest, I know I'm just picking like a general region. I, you know, I think being from the tri-state area and like deciduous trees, mm -hmm. you know, I think when I first rode in the desert and actually spent time in the desert, I was just in awe. Like it was just so cool to me to be able to ride and just see, I mean, certainly getting used to riding with exposure takes some time, but once I kind of got out of that space of like always being afraid of falling off of a cliff, then you're like, oh, this is actually, this is so beautiful. And I, I think there's so many places in the Southwest that are just some of my favorite riding, Sedona, Tucson. Um, there's a place in Southwestern Utah, so like close to Hurricane and Virgin. Mm -hmm. Uh, but the ride is called the whole guacamole and yeah. you have Zion in the background. Oh, I mean, I kept stopping on that ride and just looking and I, I don't know. I, I love those kind of rides where you're just like stopped and you're just like, wow. Um, so that was that. And then also Squamish Whistler, that area also probably some of the most beautiful riding and trails and just scenery I've, I've seen. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. Those are like my two favorites. Yeah. Too. Oh, well, um, maybe we should plan a trip. No, we should. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'll take any excuse to go on a bike trip. I know, me too. You don't have to tell me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, final question for you is what is your favorite thing about riding your bike? Mm. Yeah. Oh. I always feel like I'm cheating because I always like have more than one favorite thing. But I think... The people and the places that you meet through the bike that's what I'll say because it's it's I mean it's why I'm here talking to you it's pretty cool right like this is it, it's a it's a tool it's not only a sport like I get that it's a sport I get that people that there are athletes I consider my the way that the industry considers us as a content athlete which I find it really funny um I'm a content athlete uh but I um I think just the way that this sport can connect you with so many people and, and so many places and just get a unique perspective on a different place too than more than just kind of going and meandering around town maybe hiking it's like I don't know it's it, it's such a vehicle for um a unique exploration of places and so yeah people places yeah I love it 